Good morning, Alexa developers. Welcome to the latest APL Power Hour. I am your host, uh, Alexis Developer Education Solutions Architect, Greg Bullmash, and I am here to talk to you today about the Alexa presentation language, a uh, subject many of us know and love. Uh, for those of you who are just checking in, give us a shout out in chat so we can say hey to you and know that you're here. Uh, and uh, we're going to be having a special guest in just a couple of minutes. I'm uh, going to do some housekeeping while we uh, wait for y'all to check in. And let me get to that uh, housekeeping. So what are we going to do today? As always, I, I put this together in Inkscape because this is something many of us use for designing uh, AVG content, uh, SVGs that will convert to AVGs and bring into uh, APL, much like my little fighter plane here that I drew. Um, <laughs> this is basically the same fighter plane I used to draw in my notebooks in sixth and seventh grade. Uh, my art skills have... Uh, not progressed significantly since then. Uh, but this is what we're doing now. We're saying welcome and I got to make sure, hey, trade last, good morning. And I'm gonna put this up on the screen as I always do. Let us remember that we do have a community Slack and to get signed in and invited to it, uh, we uh, just go to this URL. It's really easy and you can join our community uh, and we have a APL dedicated channel there as well as channels for many other uh, Alexa topics. And you can really sort of get help from our staff, from our other community members, our champions, lots of people pass through there, share their knowledge, share their experiences, share their triumphs. And so it's it's a lot of fun, and I hope you will join us over there. Uh, Trade Last is asking, I recently installed Inkscape, but hasn't dived into it. Is it an easy learn? If you know um, Illustrator, it's really easy. Uh, I actually went from Illustrator to Inkscape. I actually prefer it because Illustrator is like overwhelmingly complex, while uh, Inkscape has just the right tools for me. Uh, and I've taught kids to use it, so it, it should be reasonably okay to get into if you've got some design experience. So what else are we doing today? We will, in just a couple of minutes, be bringing on our guest, Ben, from VoiceFlow to show us how VoiceFlow has updated and improved their APL tools. Then we are going to get to the plane, the plane, as you remember last week. Alexander Martin was kind enough to animate it for us. And this week, Alexander has added touch events so we can move the plane and bank it around the screen. And we'll go into how that works and see that in action. After we're done with that, we will go to our Q&A with APL After Hours uh, over on the Slack that you see right there, alexadesign.slack. Uh, and a couple of other minor housekeeping things. Uh, one, I will be doing an APL Tech Talk, which is a recorded uh, thing coming up on March 25th. Uh, we will be sending out an invitation to sign up for the webinar at uh, uh, via our email mailing list. So if you're a registered Alexa developer and you haven't like unsubscribed from our marketing mails, you'll be getting a, an invite in the next week or so to come sign up and join that, uh, that webinar. And in that, I'll be talking about how to use voice and touch to control uh, APL. 
So that'll be a lot of fun. Then uh, the day before that, on March 24th, I will be a guest voice fluencer on uh, The Voice Den, which is a really amazing, uh, amazingly fun sort of voice happy hour uh, meetup run by Dr. Terry Fisher, who is one of our Alexa champions, uh, who does Voice in Canada and The Voice Den. And it's... I've really enjoyed my time being a member of the audience. And now I get to be put on the spot as one of the voice fluencers, Greg, the announcer, Bullmash, uh, over on the voice den. And so I am going to put that sign up link right here in the chat so you can all find it and go sign up for your seat at the voice den on March 24th, which will be in two weeks. So join us there then. Uh, go to drterryfisher.com slash the dash voice dash den. And uh, yeah, there are a lot of uh, voice rooms in clubhouse these days too. And they, they have a uh, voice uh, they have a voice uh, chat show in clubhouse with the voice den as well. Unfortunately or fortunately, I am not an iOS person. They haven't dropped an Android client. So uh, I am currently excluded from the clubhouse. I'm I'm not allowed inside because I don't have the right jacket and tie. So, all right, enough about me. Enough about uh, Dr. Terry Fisher, who is awesome. Uh, and we are going to get to our guest, who I told I would bring. Told him I would bring him on a minute ago. Uh, and our guest is Ben. Teichman, is, am I saying it right? Yeah, actually, yeah, that, was, that, was that was perfect. Ben Teichman. All right. And Ben is a, you're an engineer with VoiceFlow. That's right. I'm uh, a lead engineer over at VoiceFlow. And Ben is going to talk to us about uh, some of the improvement. You know, VoiceFlow put out a very, uh, a fairly substantial update last month. Uh, they had yeah. a big event for it. I got some stickers. I'm really stoked. Where are my <laughs> stickers? Here, they're 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 literally on my desk. Uh, I've got them next to my brand new laptop that I got from Amazon, and I'm tempted that VoiceFlow <laughs> may be one of the first stickers to go on my new laptop. Oh wow, we would be so proud if that was the case. So uh, we'll we'll see about that. I, I haven't decided whether or not to decorate it yet, um, but you know, I, there's also. Uh, yeah, uh, I have stickers all over my desk. I always do. I, I tell people I got into this industry to make stickers. But, uh, you know, Ooh, the other nice potential first sticker is my Jeff Bezos sticker. Oh, <laughs> very nice. Well, that, that might have to go on the laptop first. Yeah. Seeing Jeff, as that's where it all came from. Yeah. Jeff is a very popular sticker. I, I can trade those for favors over uh, at Amazon. <laughs> oh, okay. Well then, yeah, maybe better hold on to it. Get one yeah. of those oh, like, no, no, no. Uh, plastic have, seals yeah, to keep it in. I have a lot of them. We made them for a uh, event with kids. Oh, okay. Lovely. So I have a lot of them and we, uh, we bring them out when we have the events, but we haven't in like a year. Oh, okay. uh, Alexander Martin is in the house. Welcome. Uh, and now I'm going to uh, bring your screen in, Ben, yeah, and please. you drive and tell us all about what's new for APL in VoiceFlow. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I've just started out here on our, our homepage, which if anyone hasn't checked it out, it's been revamped recently. Um, for anyone that isn't uh, aware of what VoiceFlow does, um, we are a tool to handle design, prototype, and build across Alexa, Google, um, and a number of other conversational channels that we've started supporting recently um, by having kind of a a built-in assistant uh, within our prototyping tool that can be trained for um, you know, whatever your, your end use case is if there's no specific assistant out there uh, that you're targeting. So I'm gonna go ahead and sign in here. Um, and that's gonna take me to my dashboard where I've got uh, two projects that we're gonna be looking at. So the first one is kind of my fully fleshed out project um, that we're just gonna be rushing through and building quickly. Uh, some of you might recognize um, if I jump into the uh, display here, 
some of the APL that we're going to be using today, um, courtesy of uh, some of the templates on APL Ninja. Um, so I can show you how to very easily, you know, grab one of those if you want a, a fully flushed out starting point, or if you feel like it would be, uh, you know, a, a good place for you to start with whatever your design is, um, and actually integrate that into a full um, voice experience or conversational experience on VoiceFlow. Um, so our kind of uh, primary tool here on VoiceFlow is this canvas, which allows us to lay out our design, allows us to connect um, various stages within the conversation to each other uh, and provide uh, a rich ability to jump between points in the conversation and manage your, your conversational context. Um, so I'll just go through kind of a quick overview of what I have here, and then maybe we'll jump into a blank project and build this out quickly. And you can see how easy it is to actually get started with uh, some of these features. Um, so here I have kind of the, the starting point for my whole, whole application, uh, which is this start block. Um, uh, courtesy of Alexa, there are a number of built-in commands that we support automatically, which allows you to essentially jump to some uh, kind of specific functionality within the application. So in this case, help, stop, cancel, all allow you to break your conversational flow in order to handle those in whatever way you may see fit. Um, by default, we just have uh, kind of some uh, basic text in there to say, you know, okay, stopping. Okay, session is now ending, and then we end the, the whole skill. Um, I'm going to take this and bring my kind of welcome block into play. So here we have two uh, like little bits of introductory text here, uh, and then we start listening for an intent. So this is one of the um, ways we like to build applications uh, at VoiceFlow, certainly, and would like to uh, help others to, to use the same pattern, which is um, allowing you to really jump anywhere into your conversation without having this uh, dedicated single, you know, happy path that you're following down. Uh, you can really model your uh, your application better off of how someone might actually interact in the conversation they might have. Um, so here we're listening for an intent, and you can jump to uh, either of these two points here to continue the conversation for specific um, purposes, or maybe you know you can again say any of your uh, built-in commands in order to halt your conversation and head in some other direction. So the two that I have set up here are uh, one to play a game and one to uh, finish playing. So this will basically just model a, uh, a little arcade that you can enter into. Um, you can request whichever game you want to play. Uh, and then at the end, you can at any point, you know, say, OK, that's it. I'm, uh, I'm finished gaming now. Thanks for the games and uh, end your session. So the uh, the finished playing, we can just easily see pop and exit into here. Um, uh, when I'm playing my game, I want to use my play game intent. So this is something I've uh, created, which has a number of different utterances associated. Uh, and along with that, we're also extracting some entity from your utterance in order to determine, OK, which game do you want to play and send you down the correct path. Uh, I then go into a condition block here where I have all of my different paths broken out. And then based on those, I'll head into uh, a section that is specific to my game. So uh, again, I have like a little bit of introductory text, block breaker, that's my favorite. Uh, and then we go into the actual APL for the block breaker game, which does have interactivity, um, similar to what you might find when using the authoring tool or uh, on APL Ninja. Um, and then again, we're listening for an intent so you can easily jump into playing a different game if you want. Again, finish up playing your games or head down any of those top level commands that you had before. So uh, I'm just going to quickly demonstrate what this actually looks like when it's running and then maybe run through just building out a single uh, stretch of this in a new project just to show how easy it is to actually accomplish this. Um, so I can test any of my uh, designs directly within VoiceFlow by hitting this test button up here. Uh, I do also have the ability to upload this to Alexa and test on ADC or test on an actual Alexa device if I'm so inclined. Um, but I can easily test it, modify it, and then go back to testing again, all within a pretty closed loop within VoiceFlow. And so I'm going to do that right now. Um, so uh, as I can see over here, we have this uh, training indicator here. This is something new, actually, uh, that was released as part of, part of VoiceFlow v2. Um, so we've enhanced the, uh, the NLP that is used within our prototyping 
from something that was basically just doing some some basic regex matching against uh, what was resolved as text um, to something that is actually uh, trained and assisted in the background based off of the intents and utterances that you've constructed within your project and is able to use that to give a more uh, realistic experience when doing your prototyping. Um, so I've already trained mine. I'll go and train the other one so you can see what that looks like uh, when we're creating it, but I'll just start my test project. And unfortunately, I don't know if any of you can hear the audio that's coming out of this um, because it is just on my side, um, but it's uh, Alexa's voice speaking to me. Welcome to Arcade World. What would you like to play today? Um, so I'll just take a look and say maybe Let's play Block Breaker. <clears throat> Excellent. So uh, this is just showing us, again, how the, uh, the path is advancing. However, what it's not showing us is the actual APL that uh, goes along with it. So if I jump into this visual, <clears throat> pardon me, I can see uh, this will basically render every APL um, that I push using the APL directive, essentially. But every uh, APL block within our system will be displayed to the user as they progress through the conversation. Uh, and so this gives you uh, an ability to test your application either, pardon me again, sorry, <coughs> uh, either while looking at the actual conversational flow and tracking it that way, or if you want to experience the kind of real end user experience, especially on a, a display device where this will be kind of the primary modality. Um, you can do that and you can actually even uh, switch around between uh, different versions of it if you wanted to see, oh, you know what, I realize it's not going to work on an Echo Spot now because I've cut off things to the side. Perhaps this requires a new layout, a different design, uh, something of the sort. But I can test it out on all my different devices and easily see what that experience is going to be to an end user. Um, and there is interactivity on this, so I can uh, click and drag and stuff like that. Um, so what I'll do now is you can kind of see how you can move through this conversation. Uh, I'll just go and recreate this quickly in a new project and we can see how easy it was to actually uh, get something like this up and running. Um, so if I jump over to my dashboard again, I've got a new project Arcade Castle, basically going to be the same layout. So we're just going to start by uh, having some kind of intro welcome text. So we'll say, welcome, oops, welcome to Arcade Castle. And now this editor actually has the ability to uh, add SSML as I see fit. So if I wanted to add some effect, say, have them say this uh, very fast for some reason, or very slow, or anything else that SSML is capable of, uh, we can just make that change here. And even further, if I decide, no, actually, I want it to be slow. I can preview it to listen to it. Again, unfortunately, you're unable to hear that. Um, but it gives me the ability to really quickly, again, iterate on what my response is going to actually sound uh, like and how the user is going to experience it. Um, so I've now connected my start block to this. Uh, so if I were to run through this, it would basically just give me this welcome prompt. Um, now I'm going to add a prompt step. And what this will do is basically, again, listen for any kind of intent that a user might have. And this allows you to, again, really uh, design your application or your, your conversation, pardon me, um, in a way that, that might be nonlinear and allows a user to really take multiple different paths or um, uh, jump into some kind of a context that you may not have planned for with a more linear approach. Uh, now I'm going to add a couple of intents. Um, so again, this is basically just a landing point for some kind of an interaction that the user wants to take. So here I'll say play game. Um, so what that's done is that's created a play game intent. And now I have an option to enter the utterances that uh, a user might say in order to play a game. So let's play and then game. So now what I've done by uh, adding this curly bracket and adding game here, I'm defining a slot or an entity, something that um, has some maybe predetermined set of values that it might hold. Uh, and furthermore, that a user um, might actually provide when, uh, when interacting. So here, I'm going to actually define a custom slot type. So this will allow us to just, uh, like an enumerator, if anyone's familiar from programming, you can define all of the values that it might have. Uh, and then a user can just choose between those different values. 
So here I'll define my games again, block breaker, centipede, and uh, duck hunt. Very cool. Um, now I can see once I've added this, I have an utterance that actually includes that, uh, that entity value, that slot value, uh, which will be filled when the user interacts with this. Uh, so I can actually say maybe have one of these utterances not actually uh, use a game name at all. Um, I want to play a game. All right, in this case, how do we actually get that information from a user then? Uh, so what we can do here is we can say game is actually a required slot. So although we may have an utterance to trigger this intent that doesn't include the game name itself, I can actually go and say, all right, well, this is actually going to be required. What game would you like to play? Uh, I can furthermore, if I want, add a slot confirmation so that once they do provide me with the game, I can say something to the, uh, like, OK, centipede, is that correct? Or I can have response utterances so that in this case, when they are responding to a direct prompt for the game name, uh, you can actually provide more specific utterances for that case. Um, instead, of, instead, I'm just going to leave it as it is. I'll be able to provide the utterance of just the game name itself. And I'll head back to the top. And now I have my intent to play a game. So once I have my intent and I have that slot, which I know it's required, it's going to be filled out once I've finished this block. So now I'm going to add a condition. And this condition is how I'm going to define uh, how to move on to my next behavior. Am I going to show which this game, that game? What am I going to say? So here I can see when I go to enter a condition, I immediately have all of my variables. And one of those variables is the slot that I just filled from my intent. So here I'll select game. And I'll say block breaker in order to match the value that that is, slot is going to have after finishing with the intent before. Uh, I can then add some further statements for centipede as well as for duck hunt. All right, so now I very quickly have that intent set up, and I just need to define my branching paths. Uh, and now I'll set up just one other intent, which is my good game intent. Um, I'll just have you just say good game. And when they do, uh, sorry, when they do, we will say thank you for playing. Have a good day. And then we can exit our scale. So now we've set up our exit path. I'll go ahead and just color that uh, red to make it more clear what's actually happening there. I'll color this one blue or green to indicate kind of the, uh, the happy path of coming through to play a game. So now what we need to do is we need to define our three branching paths for the games we're going to play and uh, add the actual APL documents for all of those games. So let's add a speak block in order to welcome them to the block breaker game. Welcome to block breaker. Let's break some blocks. And I'll add a display block following that. So within our Alexa projects, the display block is what allows you to actually tap into APL. It allows you to add um, everything, your document, your data, as well as your commands. Um, it also provides uh, a quick and easy way to just add some uh, splash image and uh, header if that's all that you need to really display here. But in this case, we're going to go to the advanced display type. So this will allow us to drop in a JSON file in order to get started. It also allows us to jump out to the authoring tool directly if we want to uh, play around there. But what I'm going to be doing today is going to APL Ninja directly and grabbing uh, the block breaker. Oh, there we go. The block breaker game example. Um, thank you very much, uh, Sinoyan. I hope I pronounced that okay. Um, I'm just going to grab everything in our APL data source or our APL document. Pardon me. Uh, luckily, you can see we don't have any data sources at all in order to have to pull those over as well. So I've just copied everything. I'm going to open a text editor, uh, which I hope opens on the correct screen. Oh, maybe not. There we go. OK, 
I'll open a text editor. I will add a wrapper. So we need a document defined, which will be the document I copied in. And we need our data sources defined, which we don't have any. So very convenient for us. All right, I'll paste in that, oh, paste in, pardon me. Uh, I did not copy that document. I'll paste in the document from before. Excellent. So now we have our JSON file. I will save that on my desktop as lockbreaker.json. And then I will just upload it here, lockbreaker.json. So you can see uh, it's verified, looks good. It's got the correct fields in it, those data sources and document. Uh, I can actually further modify that directly in line here. If I want to add anything in the future, maybe I'm pulling in a template and I want to define in the data source all of the values that are going to actually be used in my APL template. Um, and if I want to just check and see if everything's looking OK, I can hit this little create preview here. Uh, so one of the changes that we made recently uh, in our upgrade to VoiceFlow v2 was to include the actual WebAssembly uh, APL rendering package uh, as our way of rendering APL in line like this. So uh, it's as performant as you'll get anywhere else um, and is supported by Alexa. So uh, we all have the 1.5 features now, where before I think we were stuck on either 1.4 or 1.3 um, and happily looking forward to obviously any updates to that in the future. Cool. So now that I can see that my APL is looking exactly as I expect, let me just get my block breaker uh, link set up here. And then I'm going to do one last thing here, which is to add a one last prop step here. And what this will basically do is it'll allow me to uh, wait again for some kind of a, a user input here that they can say anytime during that uh, APL block breaker game is being displayed. And then they can jump back to playing a different game if they want or finishing their game or asking about any of the information here using commands like help, stop, or cancel. All right, so uh, now that I've got that hooked up, let's just run through all of this. I believe I have everything set up to work properly, um, but I guess we will find out live. So let's uh, run our test here. So as opposed to before, when I visit, um, because this is a new project, I haven't trained for any of the intents that exist in here. I'm going to be prompt to, prompted to train my skill. So if I click that button here, uh, this will train the assistant that we use specific to every project, every prototype, um, for, uh, based on, again, the intents, the utterances, slots, anything else that you have defined in your interaction model. All right, excellent. So now I can see I'm 100% trained. Um, this is basically just an indication of do I have any intents or slots that have deviated since last time I trained and should indicate that then I need to train my project again? I'll just pop this up here for now. Uh, and now I can start my test. So welcome to Arcade Castle. And again, I'm prompted to uh, say one of these two things. So, uh, oh, actually, let me just check. What was my, I think I just said, I want to play a game. Is that right? Yeah. So let's try this one and we can try uh, it asking us for a slot. Um, so welcome to Arcade Castle. I want to play a game. All right, so then again, it, it knows that that slot's required. It's prompting me to give that additional information. So let's say block breaker. All right, excellent. So again, if I jump over to our visual view, I can see that my APL has correctly rendered here. I have a running uh, demo of my block breaker game that I'm able to interact with. Uh, I can also you know, zoom out if I need to take a look at it from different ways, or again, switch to different devices if I want to check and see how it's rendering in different places. Um, but yeah, that's about it. That's as easy as it is to uh, set up a, a functional uh, APL-based project on VoiceFlow. Um, yeah especially using some of these awesome templates that we have on APL Ninja to, to get started. Well, th thank you, Ben. So a couple of follow-up questions. Uh, first, yeah. I'll bring in Alexander Martins. Uh, he's in our chat. 
uh, he asked uh, why you copied and pasted everything out and saved it to a document when you use the download function on APL.ninja. That's a great question. I didn't realize there was a download function on APL.ninja, and now I will forever be shamed. So uh, next time I do this demo, I will be using APL. Uh, <laughs> and there was another thing that came up for me. I, you know, as I was watching you go, uh, you were using a keyboard shortcut to bring yes. up an insert. I'm sorry, that's just habit at this point. Whenever I'm doing any of these, so if I jump over to this learn drop down here, I can actually see my shortcuts. Uh, uh, list and the one that I was using is shift plus space. So that allows me to actually bring up a uh, kind of a, a power feature, this little spotlight search here, which I can then search for any of the steps that appear on the left hand side. Um, so I can find my speak step, um, intent, display, everything should be listed there. And when I hit enter, it'll just insert it right where your cursor is anywhere on the document. Sorry about not uh, calling that out earlier. That's a good one. Oh, no, no, I, you know, um, <laughs> you, you get into your demo and uh, you just get focused. So that's a <laughs> great, great thing to have a moderator here to ask you those questions. Yeah, absolutely. So, I, um, so one other question for you, are, th are there any other features that were added in the latest update that you think might be of particular interest to Alexa skill developers? Yeah, absolutely. I think so. I was showing off um, the kind of uh, desktop version of that prototype, which is a prototype that is intended to be run maybe by the designer or, or someone within the team that's actually developing this conversation. Um, we do also have a, a much more extensive or more extensive, a, a more uh, improved upon version than we did before of our public prototypes. So if I were to go and uh, share this prototype itself, I can open it up in a new tab. And this is basically a, a window directly into the conversation where I can either um, choose to have this be text and dialogue based um, for someone who is maybe just interacting with a, a voice only device and just wants to see the transcript of their interactions. Um, one that is uh, voice or sorry, text and dialogue if you want to mimic something that's maybe actually uh, a text reply where I can type in using my keyboard. Um, but we do also have the voice and dialogue, as I was saying, where you can interact and see a transcript, but you're using your voice for all your interactions or voice and visuals, which obviously for people that are using um, or designing primarily for something that's going to have a display, um, being able to interact with it similar to how you'd interact with uh, you know, an APL or an Alexa display device um, allows you to better prototype those experiences and better share those experiences out with other people that may not be members of your team, or maybe you want to just create know, create a tweet and say, hey, everybody, come and check out this thing that I built. You now kind of have that ability and have the uh, the option to change what the modality is of that prototype, which I, th I think, pardon me, can be used by by people, you know, regardless of what uh, skill or what channel they are developing for. Well, awesome. Thank you so much, Ben, for joining us. And I, I want to remind everybody that uh, Ben will be uh, joining us over at Alexa Design slash slack so if you have more questions about voice flow go to our apl channel there drop your questions in there and over the next couple of days ben will be dropping in to answer questions so uh we really appreciate you uh doing this and we really appreciate the tools that y'all are creating over at voice flow and uh just thanks for coming on and sharing this with us Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me, Greg. This was a blast. Hopefully I didn't take up too much of your time. I tried to kind of speed through everything uh, while going over all the basics. But um, yeah, everyone uh, feel free to message me on that Slack channel and I'll be happy to answer any of your questions. All right. Well, thank you very much, Ben. I'm going to say goodbye to you and we'll get to our next thing uh, in just a moment. So once again, everybody uh, in chat, say thanks to Ben uh, and let me welcome Ricardo and Mitch, C. Mitch, who joined us during the uh, thing, um, during the demo, excuse me. Uh, you know, sometimes your brain just grabs a generic word. Uh, and then also... Uh, Alexander Martin said he's going to ask some questions in Slack. So, uh, you're going to get some questions from the creator of APL.ninja. So I'll be looking out for them. Be on your toes. Yeah, seriously. And, okay. And so let's all say goodbye to Ben. Bye-bye, Ben. Bye-bye. Right, thanks again for having me. See you around. 
All right. Take care. All right. So now you're stuck with me again. Ha ha. Yeah. Nice dad is gone. Mean dad is back. <laughs> no, actually. Uh, so, hey, uh, so look at all of you who are saying goodbye to Ben. Toll Car, Rashad Williams, Little Defeat. Thank you all for joining us and thank you all for watching Ben's demo. We really appreciate it. And uh, our next thing in the schedule is we are going to head on over to APL.ninja because, uh, you know, I drew an airplane and I had big goals for it. But uh, unfortunately, uh, a lot of stuff at work came up. I did not have as much time as I wanted to to put more features on it. Alexander Martin jumped in. He's been adding features. He's been giving me some cheat sheets to, so I can uh, share it all with you. Um, and so let me just bring up my second screen here. And here we are over at APL.ninja in the APL Power Hour section this is on the home page on the home page scroll down you'll find the apl power hour dot section so you'll find the plane that we created that was just my drawing and this is uh what we imported into an apl document from an svg i created in inkscape just basically a bunch of circles and a triangle and then uh we added our propeller and got it spinning in stage two and today we are adding touch events and making it possible uh, a touch wrapper and making it possible to bank the plane back to the sides on the screen so let's bring that up and we'll actually open it in the editor i'm going to make the editor just a little bigger so it's easier for you to see the um see the text and I am going to bring up this the cheat sheet that Alexander provided me because um, he did he did the work. I'm just uh, I'm just uh, Vanna here, you know, doing the uh, turning the letters. Um, so uh, really appreciate his work on this and uh, all the help that he is giving to the community, both as creator of APL.ninja, as well as doing stuff like this and providing some tutorial notes so we can go through it here on the APL Power Hour. It, uh, it's, it's really awesome. So what we're going to do is we've got our plane. I'm going to show you what it does now. We click and drag click and drag it is now taking gestures and moving banking on the screen because when a plane turns it banks so we're banking the plane turning in the sky and you could use something like this to um have like a a, a dodge game where you have like birds or other planes coming from the background getting larger and larger and you got to bank out of the way bank out of the way so you can literally create a game with this uh, kind of motion, which is really fun. And so we're going to go through what Alexander did to make that banking possible. Now, uh, essentially, uh, there are a bunch of different types of components, and one of them is touchable components. And the main touchable components are the touch wrapper and the vector graphic component. But what I'm going to point out is that we have a number of other uh, components in our responsive components collection that's part of the APL layouts package 1.2.0, like our button and radio button and some of the other form elements like that, that incorporate the touch wrapper under the hood. Um, but, you know, when you've got the touch wrapper, it responds to multiple kinds of touches. Uh, we have gestures. So we have a long press, a double press, a swipe, a click, uh, and we can actually respond to parts of it like on down. So like while the finger is on the screen or on move while the finger is on the screen and moving or on up when the finger leaves the screen. Uh, and those are very useful uh, types of um, events that we see uh, being used in uh, various kinds of touch events throughout mobile and Windows touch screens and uh, even 
you know, mouse events, mouse down, mouse up when you're working in the web. Uh, and so the plane is already a vector graphic, so it is touchable, but the way it's constructed, putting a touch wrapper around it makes it easier to control. Uh, it gives us sort of like one complete area instead of touching on parts of the plane. So, uh, according to Alexander, we don't have a demo of this currently. If, if we didn't, it would make the plane a little harder to control. Um, and so we're wrapping the, the, uh, plane in a touch wrapper and we'll get to this in a minute. But the first thing that we're doing here on line 110 is we're adding a few more, uh, um, items to our binding variables. Now, you remember we had the propeller rotation, which was helping us control this animation. Now we're getting on down position X, on down position Y, plane X and plane Y. So we know the position of the finger on down and then also where the plane currently is in relation to that. And here we come down and we've uh, wrapped our touch wrapper with some items. What are we doing here? Yes. So we've got our touch wrapper and uh, let me go to Alexander's cheat sheet notes, which I'm so grateful for. Uh, so at line 130, we're divining the gesture handlers for on down and on move right here. At line 142, we're actually, uh, you know, we've got our on down, on move. And then at line 155, we're actually going to start working with our vector graphic. Now, notice that all of this is in the touch wrapper now. It's an item within the touch wrapper. So our on move handler is going to calculate the absolute X and Y value for our new plane position. And we just really need to uh, reposition the plane and we'll add a transform property to the vector graphic at 164 here, which is going to, okay. It's going to move the plane with the translation and uh, on the X and Y coordinates and thanks to Alexander, we've got this little rot banking here, but we're keeping the rotation very small. Notice it's 0 0.625 here on the rotation so that we're not doing barrel rolls as we move the plane. We're just banking. We're banking so we can turn. We're not doing all sorts of acrobatics. Although you could increase that rotation and make it possible to do some interesting stuff. And notice that the plane is now, whoa. Let's see, let's raise that up even more. All right, what do we get here? Yeah. So yeah, if you're doing the game and you really want to get the plane out of the way of oncoming traffic, yeah, that might be fun. We'll bring it back to 0625. So with that, we've got it going now. We've we're trans, you know, we're using the translation to move the plane on the X and Y axes and the rotation to rotate it based on that translation. So the farther we come to one side or the other, the more it banks. But if we just go up or down, it stays flat. So it's rotating just a little based on our X, which is fun. And as we showed right here, boom, right? Uh, let's go back one more. We have an APL power hour section here 
on APL.ninja. So this is our animation, APL Power Hour Plane Stage 3, which we can use. And you can fork and you can play with and you can go through the code because really the great thing about APL Ninja is, you know, you can look at the code. You can look at how this was done. Uh, like I like to say, back in the day when I was a kid with a Commodore 64, we used to type in basic programs out of magazines. Uh, this is before magazines came with floppy disks or CD-ROMs uh, that you could use to load them because, oh, wow, you know, for a while, we used to use the same cassette tapes that you would use for your mixtapes to record uh, uh, very scratchy, you know, almost modemy sound that could then be replayed uh, and used to load a program. It was, uh, uh, you know, the old days when, when people died of uh, consumption and, you know, uh, snake oil salesmen roam the West. <laughs> but this is great. I, you know, I really love that uh, we have this, that we can come in here, we can look at this, you can download it, you can open it in the editor, look at it, you can bring it into your projects, you can edit it and see these changes live with the live update. Or, you know, the thing is, is that with the live update, if I say, um, if I do this, breaks oh, no so if i if i have the live update on it breaks but if i do that then oops turn off the live update just take out this and it's not going to break i can type things in i can turn the live update back on when i believe i've got it right So these are all great features. And then if you want to build your own copy, you can fork this. You can download a copy to work with locally. Uh, I can delete it. This delete function probably is not going to be there for you. But this is a great thing from uh, Alexander Martin. Thank you very much uh, for helping us to move our plane. And if you're more interested in working with the touch wrapper and working with uh, touch components, uh, as I said earlier in the show, I will be doing a webinar for the Alexa Tech Talks on how to control uh, an APL uh, design with voice and touch. So what we'll be doing is we'll actually be building some screens that have buttons in them and adjusting the screens like a single page application. So we're moving through content, we're, we're navigating through stuff and uh, we can do it either with voice or with touch and we'll show how to do that and sh maybe share some code. Uh, that's gonna be on March 25th at about 10 a.m. Pacific. And if you are a registered Alexa developer and you are accepting uh, marketing emails from us, you will get an invitation to sign up most likely in the next week. If you don't get one, I will have the sign up link and we will share it next week here in the APL Power Hour. And I'll be sharing it extensively over on my Twitter links. Uh, so if you follow me at, at let my people code on the Twitter, let me put this in uh, here. First, I want to put this in because I had this queued up and I was so busy thanking Ben um, that I forgot to put this up on screen. So if you want to try VoiceFlow, try it over at voiceflow.com. And remember, uh, if you go to our Slack, sign up for it. Join it, have fun with it. Uh, you will be able to ask some questions about voice flow in the APL channel, and Ben will be dropping by over the next couple of days to answer. And then uh, want to point out a couple of things. Okay. 
Okay, I'm going to I'm going to take my Alexa Design Slack off the screen. I am going to put this. This is APL.ninja. I mean, this is literally, literally all you need to type into your browser to go to APL.ninja, try out the various APL screens that people have shared. You saw Ben using uh, a breakout game off of APL.ninja. Uh, you've got the plane there. You've got uh, the Vanishing Stripes background, Dalmatian spots background by Alexander. We've got so many things. Pong, block breaking game, uh, simplified version of Moorhun, which I believe uh, uh, Ben was showing off his duck hunt. And of course, the APL Power Hour section right here, which is so awesome. Thank you so much, Alexander. So yeah, and then obviously uh, the video player with uh, controls is uh, showing the showing the trailer, I believe, for Big Buck Bunny, which is uh, part of Blender's open movie project, uh, where they bring together a crowdfunded uh, open source 3D movie. And they share, they not only share the movie with everybody, they share a lot of uh, the experience of building it. So if you're really into 3D animation and Blender, uh, and you don't know about the uh, that particular project, check it out. Uh, I can put up a link over in uh, the Slack later today if anybody's interested. But the last thing I want to do before we uh, go into our commercial, uh, we go into our Q&A, is I also want to mention once again, two weeks from today, I will be on Dr. Terry Fisher's voice den. Hello, Antonio. I will be on Dr. Terry Fisher's voice den. And uh, you can sign up for your ticket right there, drterryfisher.com, the-voice-den. And come and see me be one of the influencers, Greg the announcer, Bullmash. Uh, and, you know, somehow uh, this, is, this is where the coolest people in voice gather and me. Uh, I'm not going to even claim that I'm even close to one of the coolest people in voice, but they're, uh, they're letting me be part of their club, uh, this month. So I'm really happy to be there and, uh, represent for Alexa. So with that, uh, we've got a few minutes left. We can do some Q and a, if anybody wants to throw a question into, the uh, chat, I will try to answer it. And we also have some serious Alexa APL experts here in the chat, uh, especially Alexander Martin, uh, who is who is the APL ninja, honestly. I, I will call him the APL ninja. Um, uh, he's, he's, he's the APL, uh, you know, multi-tool he's he's the the apl like wrench pliers hammer uh screwdriver scissors everything um and uh we will uh, you know we got a lot of experts on here so if you got a question you can drop it in the chat if not we will uh sign off i'll give you a couple of minutes back and we will all be available over at let me do this in frame over at, oh, let me, oh, let's just do this. Don't you hate it when you're like going to do something sort of cool and then you didn't do your prep. We'll be over at APL design slash slack. Uh, there, I'm going to do this so I can really sort of uh, get a little, let's see here. How do I move my fingers? This is like, there we go. There, there. Alexa design slash Slack. And we will uh, be over there for what I call 
APL Power Hour After Hours, uh, where you can drop your questions in the APL channel. And we have so many great community members and staff members and me and uh, even Ben will be dropping by to look at and try and answer some of your questions. And with that, we're, we're actually a little short and I'm not going to just run filler uh, to <laughs> Twitch needs some ninja emojis. Yes, Alexander, it does. I think we need to, we need to set up some, uh, maybe a, a couple of ninja emojis. Uh, hmm. We'll work on it. Um, so what do I want to leave you with? The Slack tech talk, which is coming up on March 25th. Uh, emails going out in the next week or so. I will have the sign up link on this channel next week. And uh, join me on the voice den with our Alex champion, Dr. Terry Fisher, and some of our other voice fluencers who are, uh, you know, just way cooler than me and are the real reason you should be showing up. And with that, uh, I will say bye to all of you. Bye, Trade Last. Bye, Alexander. Bye, Antonio. Bye, Ricardo. Uh, who else? Little Defeat, Rashad, Tolkar, um, C. Mitch, uh, and uh, everyone else. Thank you so much for joining. And we will see you next week on the APL Power Hour. And remember, these are archived on Twitch and on uh, YouTube. So if you want to go back through Ben's presentation a little more slowly, focus in on something he was doing, you'll always be able to do that uh, once these show up there. Thanks again. Have a wonderful Wednesday. See you next week. Bye-bye.